Hello everyone. Let's talk about the Comtist Security Plus exam and what you can do to prepare, study for, and pass it. So first of all, some general notes about the CompTIA Security Plus exam. This is considered to be the starting point certification if you're planning to step into a cybersecurity career. CompTIA does not have any expectations or requirements for you to write this exam. Technically, a newborn baby could write this exam, and if they pass it, they're CompTIA Security Plus certified. But it is recommended that you have done A plus and Network Plus, whether they're valid or not doesn't matter, that you've done them so that you have that knowledge, or that you have a few years experience, this advice is worth heeding. Now, ideally I'd say try and have both. Now I want to quickly address a small bit of controversy, which is the value of the certification. I've seen a lot of content creators online argue that CompTIA certifications, especially Security Plus in particular, are not really worth having as they don't prove much. Well, here's the thing. It does prove that you've got a certain amount of knowledge. A bare minimum expectation has been met. That's the very least I can guarantee you. Also, it does help add to your resume or CV and helps hiring managers and HR personnel recognize your competency and knowledge level. So yes, this is not necessarily going to make you a kick-ass cybersecurity expert. I'm not going to sell you bullshit like that. But it will definitely help you get that job, get that promotion. So it is worth doing, but don't expect it to be something that will guarantee you the perfect job, the perfect income, etc. Treat it for what it is. Now let's talk about your studying resources that you're going to need to get going with. Obviously you have watched my videos to this point. Thank you very much for doing so. But I would also recommend getting your hands on some extra material besides obviously what I've created. CompTIA does have their own self-paced study guide that is available on their online store. Just if you do purchase it, please make sure that the exam code is SY0701 as that is the exam code and syllabus I have built these videos around. At the time of the recording, the SY0601 syllabus is still available as, as well as the exam. So just make sure that you buy the correct one. Uh, the ISBN number is there if you need to double check it. However, if you don't want to use CompTIA's textbook, the Cybex CompTIA Security Plus Study Guide 9th Edition by Mike Chappelle and David Seidel is really good. I've always had a soft spot for Cybex material when it comes to these certifications. They're very well written and quite good for self-study. But CompTIA Security Plus being a somewhat practically orientated exam as much as theory-based, I would recommend that you use CompTIA's Cert Master Labs for Security Plus. There are individual licenses available on CompTIA's online store. And for everybody, there is regional pricing available. There's pricing for people in the USA, and there's pricing for different parts of the world. So check out your CompTIA online store. I highly encourage these online labs. They're made by CompTIA, they're hosted by CompTIA, and you get one year access with your license, which is plenty of time to play with these exercises and make yourself comfortable for the exam. I'm a big believer in trying to do these types of exercises to reinforce what you learn in theory. But let's go and have a look at some exam details. So if you head over to CompTIA's website on www.comptia.org, you'll land up on this web page. If you mouse over certifications, you'll see Security Plus over there. For some reason they do it alphabetical, I don't know why, it irritates me to no end. And you click on Security Plus, and you'll be taken to the Security Plus exam page. Now, please be aware, at the time of this video being recorded, CompTIA still has the 601 syllabus available, but I'm preparing you for 701, which will be around for a few years to go still. Now, there's a lot of fluffy stuff here. Nice to read if you want to, but what most people are really interested in is if you scroll down, you land up at this part of the web page. You can read about the SY0701 exam over here. Just pay attention to the right-hand side of this table. You can also download the official exam objectives and even some CompTIA-sanctioned practice questions by just filling out your details here and choosing training status, planning on taking the exam, agree to the T's and C's, submit, and you'll be able to download those documents. 
I do encourage reviewing the official exam objectives PDF. It's nice to do. And also there is usually a glossary at the end of all of the CompTIA exam documents for the objectives, which will give you all the acronyms and abbreviations that CompTIA would use in any of their exams, obviously per exam. So definitely worth checking out. Now, let's go and review some of the key details about this exam. So first of all, as we said, the exam code is SY0-701. There are no prerequisites, but CompTIA does recommend that you've got Network Plus behind you or a certain amount of experience that equates to what you would know from Network Plus. I encourage both. You will get, at most, 90 questions in the exam. You might get less than 90 questions, as CompTIA has a hidden difficulty score that they don't reveal to me or you, and that dictates and governs which questions are considered harder, and therefore you get fewer questions if you've got harder questions. Also, while I'm on this, you'll see this when you do your CompTIA exam, but CompTIA does ask test questions. And when I say test questions, I mean questions that will not count towards your final score. It's CompTIA busy experimenting with a new questioning style or a new objective or something like that, not part of the official exam set. Now, if you get those questions right or wrong, it does not affect your final score. So if you do see a question that you feel like is a bit unfair and you didn't see that in the study material, don't beat yourself up, don't panic, you didn't miss anything. It's probably one of those beta questions that they're busy testing out. Now in terms of the type of questions you're going to get, they're going to be multiple choice, mostly, and performance-based questions. First of all, let's quickly tackle the multiple choice. It'll always be picking an option, sometimes picking more than one. CompTIA is very nice and they do tell you if you need to choose more than one option and how many to choose. So always pay attention to what is at the end of the question as it will indicate to you if this is a multi-select question. Then for your performance-based questions, these are affectionately referred to as simulations where you will do something practically in the exam using a simulated environment. It will either be a approximation of a real thing, like for example setting up a generic firewall with a generic set of rules or something similar to that. Otherwise they might simulate a real environment like a Windows computer which would be very very likely in the workplace. And technically any sort of questions like drag and drop and match the columns would probably fall under the performance based question set as well. This is one of the reasons why I encourage the CompTIA Cert Master Labs. It helps a lot to get ready for those. Now you will have 90 minutes to write this exam, plus an extra 15 minutes at the end to do an end of exam survey. Although those extra 15 minutes are not for you to do your exam, they're for the survey only. You need to achieve 750 points out of 900 to pass this exam. Slightly a high mark, but very, very achievable, very, very doable. And it does promise that you have got most of the knowledge that is expected of you with the Security Plus certification having such a decently high pass mark. Now, CompTIA certifications are, for the most part, continual education or CE certifications. This means that every three years they expire unless you do something to renew them. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. Within three years, you could rewrite the Security Plus exam, renewing it, but that's boring. Why do you want to keep writing the same exam over and over again? Alternatively, you could write an exam that comes after Security Plus in a learning journey. For CompTIA, what comes after Security Plus is CISA Plus, or Cybersecurity Analyst, or Pentest Plus, Penetration Tester. Those two will trigger a renewal on Security Plus, Network Plus, A Plus, etc. So I usually suggest that people try and do the follow-on certification about two years after they've passed whatever they're working on right now, in this case Security Plus. That way you can really maximize the longevity of that exam. Alternatively, you could also join the continual education program that CompTIA has. You pay an annual membership fee and then there's a variety of activities and tasks you can do that help keep your Security Plus certification up to date. One of the easiest I've found is just attending some of CompTIA's webinars where discussion topics in the webinars will net you CE points, which once you've got enough of them, will trigger a renewal on your certifications. So you've got options for keeping this up to date without having to redo the exam over and over again. 
Now, some advice for doing the exam. First of all, if you don't know the answer to a question right away, move on, come back to it later. CompTIA allows you to flag questions for review and go back to them at a later point, at least in Security Plus. So take advantage of that. First of all, a question later on in the exam might accidentally help you with a question you're struggling with now. Also, your subconscious will be chewing away at that question you don't know the answer to, and when you come back later, you have that eureka moment. Now for CompTIA, I advise that you flag performance-based questions as they pop up and come back to them later. One thing I've noticed a lot of people battle with with CompTIA is getting those performance-based questions done quickly enough so that they can answer the vast majority of the theory questions. One of the better techniques you can use is flag those performance-based questions. Don't even waste your time looking at them. Flag them. Go back to them once you've done all your theory questions that you're comfortable with. That way you've got as much out of the way as you can and as little time as possible. And now you've got more time where you can focus on trying to figure out how to deal with that performance-based question. Especially as I have noticed whenever I write a CompTIA exam that the performance-based questions do tend to pop up in the beginning half of the questions that I get given. So take advantage of that flag for review button. It'll help you. Then read your question, read your options, run through the question again. It helps a lot to make sure that once you've looked at the whole thing, you review the question just to make sure you're dead certain what they're asking of you. And nothing wrong with using a process of elimination to at least get rid of the wrong options. Like many of these certification exams, they often go with a set of two wrong and two kind of right options. One will obviously be more right than the other. A process of elimination will help to work it out. Now, another thing that CompTIA also likes to do is they like to give you scenario-based questions. Whatever you do, do not overthink the scenario given to you. I advise that you focus mainly on what they present in the scenario. Thinking a little bit beyond the scenario is okay, but if you keep thinking beyond the scenario and making assumptions, before you realize it, you've got a justification for every option being right under the correct circumstances. If you find yourself falling into that trap, flag the question, come back to it later. And then go back with that mindset of, okay, stick to the scenario, maybe a little bit beyond it, but no more. It's a fine art that you will master, I promise. And don't let new technical information intimidate you. Read what's there and think. CompTIA will often use very generic looking rules and config and logs that will put people off balance. I've met people who have had months or years of experience working with, for instance, let's say log files from a particular kind of firewall. And then they get given a log file format they're not used to and they panic in the exam. Don't panic. Slow down. Look what's there. Take from it what you can and you'll be amazed what you can figure out. And be mindful of time. You've got 90 minutes for 90 questions. Thankfully, some of those questions will be quick and easy to read to the point where you'll probably answer it in less than a minute. And you can get through this exam quite briskly. Trust me, it is very doable. But keep your eye on the time, but don't obsess about it. Be conscious of how long it's taking you to work through things, but don't panic. If you use that technique of flag the things you don't know straight away and flag the performance-based questions for later review, you'll have a much easier time of doing this exam. Now, after this video, I will be releasing a practice exam video where we will review some Security Plus-like questions that I've put together. I will have that up and available in this playlist. However, I would like to thank you for watching this video and hopefully watching this whole series. I appreciate it. And if you have any friends or family that are looking at doing the certification exam or any colleagues, feel free to share this information with them and share the whole playlist. Otherwise, again, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next video.